Hi everyone. I hope that you guys are staying healthy, safe, and inside as much as possible. And thank you all for listening to my videos. I really appreciate it and I hope that I am reaching some of you. Um, I've shared a lot about my coping skills through the quarantine and my own mental health story, but I need to talk to you guys about the reason that I began believing in recovery in the first place, and that is my psychiatric service dog, Joey. I had my last hospitalization um, in December of 2013, and I wasn't back in the hospital all after that, but I also wasn't living my best life. Um, I was still too anxious to go to stores by myself, go out to eat. Um, I was heavily medicated on anti-anxiety medications if I did go anywhere. And I didn't believe that I was going to get any better. It had taken away my independence and um, things that I was really proud of for the first 21 years of my life. So my mom and my whole family have been so supportive. And my mom knew that there had to be something that could help. So she accidentally stumbled on an article about psychiatric service dogs. And we didn't know that there were special kinds of service dogs that had skills which could help people with mental illness. We had heard of therapy dogs and emotional support dogs for people with PTSD, but we thought that was pretty much it. So my mom reached out to a trainer she worked with for years, Nancy Banisk in Kingston, New York. And she said, I could help you in this and help teach obedience and higher level skills to help your puppy that you choose become a service dog. So my mom went online right away and she was doing research and she stumbled across a collie with the sweetest, most beautiful face. And I was instantly in love with that picture. Within a few days, we were on our way to Beacon Hill Collies to meet him. My mom and I jokingly referred to him as Joey after my brother's stuffed collie he had when he was little. The name ended up sticking, and the minute I met Joey and his dad, Sonny, I knew it was meant to be. The next week, we drove back up to bring him home. I loved him, but I was apprehensive about what the future was going to hold for us as a team. Before we started training, Joey and I spent a few weeks to get to know each other, and Joey was able to learn about how anxiety affected me. When Joey's vest arrived in the mail, it was time to start his basic public access training. Service dogs are not legally required to wear vests, but we chose to have Joey wear a vest because it would help him understand when he was working, and we figured it would deter people from approaching or petting him. Our first training was walking on a leash. My mom and I would take him to the McDonald's parking lot so he could be used to cars and noise. This was also good practice for my own anxiety, as being in public, especially restaurants, was very triggering. Between trainings, he had plenty of off-duty time to just be a puppy. My mom surprised me one day with a Facebook page to document Joey's training in progress, called Joey's Journey from Puppy to Service Dog. Nearly all the posts were written by her for the first few months, as writing and responding to comments were still too overwhelming for me. When we began working with Nancy, Joey stepped up his training and began to learn special skills and tasks. We practiced walking around stores and executing basic obedience skills while out in public. Joey's primary task was blocking. I would signal for him to stand in certain positions that would create space between myself and another person. This was designed to ease anxiety in crowds. He was the original king of social distancing. Joey also mastered a tuck, where he would sit under a chair or a table in public to ensure he was out of the way of other people. Our first independent trips were to therapy and doctor's appointments. He was a natural. Soon I was able to go to stores with him. This was a giant barrier for me to overcome as I had not been able to go to stores alone without having an anxiety attack in the car. I was even able to go to restaurants, which had been too triggering for me. 
These were parts of my life I wasn't sure I'd ever get back. On some days, Joey acted as my emotional support animal and helped me cope with my illness at home. He was there for me through it all. Eventually, I began to write the majority of the posts on Joey's Facebook page. My mom and I changed the name to Joey's Journey Toward Service Dog Awareness. I was proud that I could share my voice and offer support to others. The Joey's Journey logo was made by my fashion designer cousin, Laurel DeWitt. Talking about my mental health struggles became therapeutic and opened new doors. My family ordered and gave out Joey's Journey bracelets. We went to a mental health awareness walk, and our Harlem Globetrotter friend, Tay Fisher, nicknamed him Lassie Globetrotter. Nancy Banisk introduced me to Courtney, a service dog handler my age who she was working with. Her psychiatric and mobility service dog, Remy, began training with Joey, and Courtney became one of my closest friends. Remy even taught Joey some new tricks. By 2016, Joey had over 3,000 Facebook followers. People often ask what Joey liked to do when he wasn't working. Joey loved dress up and we celebrated all the holidays together as a family. He watched the 2016 Summer Olympics with me and cheered for Simone Biles and Allie Raisman. He also became quite the workout enthusiast. When Joey wasn't in his vest, he was just one of the dogs hanging out with his golden retriever sisters. In October of that year, we added to the Collie crew. We went back to Beacon Hill Collies and got Joey's biological baby sister, Cassie. They became best friends. By then, I was able to complete more and more public activities without needing Joey. It was bittersweet. In November, Joey went with me on my first date with Ethan. The rest was history. On February 16th, 2019, Joey escorted my mom down the aisle and stood with me on the best day of my life. So people ask me a lot, where is Joey now? And I have to explain that since January of 2017, I really haven't used him as a service dog. I still used him for emotional support at home, but I was able to go out independently and fulfill the tasks that he was made to help me with. So when I got married, I had to make a tough decision and I decided that it was in Joey's best interest that he lives with his family that he grew up with since he was a puppy, with Cassie, with his golden retriever sisters, with my pig and my goats and uprooting him wouldn't be fair. I knew that I was going to be living close and I could visit him whenever I needed. And if for some reason I did need him in the future, he would be there. And Joey is, I'm sure right now, watching TV, wrestling with Cassie, and he deserves retirement. There is no doubt in my mind that Joey saved me. He gave me back my independence, confidence, and quality of life. I hope others who are in a similar situation will be able to find this type of support. I'm here to answer any questions about Joey, my story, or service dogs in general. We all deserve to find light in the darkness, and we all deserve to meet our heroes.